What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up and Chat. My name is BJ Matthews, a.k.a. B. Jizzle. Before we get started, follow us on the YouTube page, Pull Up Basketball Podcast, as well as Spotify, iHeartRadio, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Hit us up on our TikTok, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast, as well. Follow me on my Instagram, B. Jizzle, and Facebook, BJ Matthews. Follow my co-host, Rick Masters, at Rick Masters 23 on his Instagram. His Facebook is Broderick Masters, B-R-O-D-R-I-C-K Masters. You know what I'm saying? Hit the like, share, and subscribe button on the top of the screen. As well as hit that notification button, get updated content every time we drop a new hit. Let's get it popping. So it's so much to unravel um, for this video. First thing I want to make very clear: I've been asked why do I do my pull up and chat videos in the car. It's very simple. No pun intended. I'm in the car, pulling up and chatting with y'all. So that's why we're doing the pull up and chat. That's why I do my videos, pull up and chat. Uh, our regular Sunday videos I do in my you know my room slash studio. You know what I'm saying? That's just the setup that we have. But anyway, that's that's none of that's important but let me get to this the main point of this video um it's so much to kind of um, unveil about what's going on that i just decided to do it all in one video um but the la clippers saga with Kawhi Leonard and paul george um people already know the, the clippers have had an uphill battle this upcoming season going into it not understand that Kawhi leonard um would be out uh for majority if not all the season that's been the story. You know, he tore his ACL last year in the playoffs against the Utah Jazz back in July. Um, so there was a good there. He wasn't going to play much of this season. So um, that was kind of the the that was kind of the evaluation going into this year. So the Clippers pretty much, is, like I said, the Kawhi Leonard is not with us right now. Um, you know, Paul George, a secondary star, was going to be the one to carry the load and lead the charge. And for the most part of the season, he's been available, right? Um, he's led the charge. He's been great. The Clippers have at one point with, I think the fourth, fifth seed in the Western conference. Um, so he was doing his thing throughout the season. Um, but recently about such much about a month ago, um, he had a lingering injury in his elbow, what they called a UCL, a torn UCL in his elbow. The first time around, he'd been playing about it. He was playing with it for two games. Um, he sat out for about two weeks, let it rest, came back. He was playing, you know, the first another two, three games. He started feeling pain in his elbow again. So he felt that's when he found out he had a torn UCL, which, you know, if he gets that surgery, what they call the Tommy John surgery um, in his elbow, he's going to be about an eight to 12 month uh, recovery process. So that will put him pretty much out for all this year and then part of next year if he gets that surgery done. So that was a big blow to the Clippers. So what they decided to do, um, they announced back around Christmas, I believe Christmas day, that he had this injury. They said they're going to rest and reevaluate this injury for about three to four weeks. So we're about to, at the two and a half week mark from Christmas to now. Um, there was reports this morning that I seen from um, a guy, a guy I want to make sure I got his name right. His name is Jake Fishner, I think his name. Um, he works for Bleacher Report. He announced that the Clippers have a possibility of him missing this se- the rest of the season with this injury. So let me kind of, you know, break everything down before we continue on it so like i said i was gonna do two separate videos one on paul george one on Kawhi Leonard. but i'm like you know what i've been listening to all these different news reports i've been following this story for you know the last month closely i've been following the clippers all season and um i feel like it's just best i just do this all at one time the clippers right now are sitting at the eighth spot in the western conference um and let me just be very clear. I'm going to make my perspective on what I think is going to happen and what I think um, the Clippers are going to do moving on and moving forward and what they're thinking right now. It's just my perspective, okay? The Clippers, like I said, are sitting number eighth in the playoff spot. In order to make the playoffs, it's the, it's the best eight teams in the conference, right? The Western Eastern Conference. The number eight right now. If you look at the standings in the Western Conference, we're 40 games in. The Clippers are on track to make the playoffs. The teams below them, Minnesota, San Antonio, Portland, New Orleans, Sacramento, those teams are like so far behind. There's not really a chance that they're going to make the playoffs unless the Clippers just go on a huge losing streak and then they go on a winning streak, right? Minnesota is a game behind the Clippers, but the rest of those teams I just mentioned are not close to the Clippers right now. They're not making the playoffs. So the Clippers pretty much are going to be there. It's just a matter of what seed they're going to be in. The fifth to eighth seed right now. Um... You got teams like Dallas. You got teams like um, the Clippers, the Lakers, all those teams. Minnesota right, you know, a game and a half, you know, apart from each other. So they can change at any time. So that's where I'm looking at the Clippers to finish at the end of the season between the fifth and eighth seed. So now what does that put 
Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, what they're going to do about them too. It was reported last week that Kawhi Leonard by Chris Haynes, uh, NBA insider, well-known in the NBA, well-respected Chris Haynes. Uh, the Clippers had a game against the Phoenix Suns last week. And he reported right before the game that Kawhi Leonard was ahead of rehab schedule. Now, my point of view has been consistent about Kawhi Leonard. He will be coming back this season. He should come back, and he will come back. And let me break it down why. The injury he sustained was a partially torn ACL. That injury, from what I researched, is a six, is a three- to six-month recovery injury. Three- to six-month. A partially torn ACL. Not a fully torn, a partially torn ACL. So if you got the surgery back in July, if we tell you let's make it six months, January is about the time he's like back on the court. So right now he's back on the court. He's doing workouts, stuff of that nature. He's on schedule. But they're actually saying he's ahead of schedule. So he's looking better than what he was you know, projected to look. So let's say that Kawhi Leonard right now in January is back on the court, doing workouts, stuff like that. You know, take some time, a couple months to get his win back, his conditioning back. That'll put him about March. That's about the time we had him pretty much listed to come back in the first place. But since he's ahead of schedule, it's a possibility he can come back right before the All-Star break. So you talk about the, se the season ending back. The season is going to end in um, May. That's when the playoffs start. So you say, you know, Kawhi comes back in March. That gives them about two months to get prepared for the playoffs. If it was for me and I'm the Clippers, I'm saying to myself, if Kawhi Leonard feels, because remember, this is the same guy who takes care of his body and makes sure that if he's not ready to go, he's not ready to go. If Kawhi Leonard's saying, look, I'm good enough to go, and the Clippers look at him and check him out, all the boxes, I'm more optimistic to let him come back. You have to let him come back because this team, this Clipper team, fully strength can beat anybody. We proved that. They proved that last year against the uh, Phoenix Suns. They took them to six games with three guys, such as Kawhi Leonard, Serge Ibaka, and Vizca Zubak, missing time. They beat the Utah Jazz, who were fully strength, when they brought Mike Conley back in game seven. This Clipper team is not a team that is just, you know, there to, you know, compete. They're there to be a championship team. The time is to win is right now. So if Kawhi Leonard feels good enough to come back, you have to bring him back. I keep hearing these still these storylines talking about some uh, Kawhi Leonard, you don't want to rush the injury back. He's on schedule. If it was a regular injury, he would be able to come back in March. So it's not rushing nothing back. This is the timetable that he was supposed to come back as March. It doesn't make sense for them to, to basically let him sit another year out and we'll have another year wasted, especially with the Clippers being in a position where they are right now. Now, Paul George, let me talk about Paul George. And I know that was a lot to unveil, so I hope that you guys stick with me. PG. Tore his, he tore his elbow, uh, UCL on his elbow. That's the, that's, the, uh, that's the injury he's dealing with right now. It was reported, um, like I said this morning, that he's a chance for him missing the rest of the season. When I saw that article, I was very, very skeptical because, number one, the guy that reported this injury also said that Kawhi Leonard earlier this season, it was a slim to none chance that he was going to come back and play. Well, now the reports we're seeing that was not accurate, that he actually has a strong possibility to come back. So I always make sure I pay attention to who's reporting the story. If it's, you know, very few people have my trust in the NBA. Adrian Wojnarowski, Chris Haynes, um, Rick Bucher are the three NBA insiders who have my most of my trust. Everything that they report, pretty much, you can take it to the bank. The rest of these guys on Bleacher Report and Hoops Hype and uh, all these other little news sites, I'm, I'm taking with a grain of salt. So... When I saw the fact, the, the fact that PG, that they're talking about sending him out, I'm asking myself, where did he get these sources from? Who's the one that gave him this information? Because I haven't heard nothing from any other big news sites. I haven't heard nothing from Walsh. I ain't heard nothing from Chris Haynes who, to, to back this story up. So I'm thinking in my head that the Clippers have not decided anything. They said initially they're going to give it three to four weeks first and let uh, Paul George rest that elbow, and then they're going to reevaluate him. We're not at three weeks yet. We're at about two and a half. So I feel like the Clippers are letting Paul George rest that elbow, give him rehab, and see where they're at. Uh, Reggie Jackson last week just said that Paul George felt good. So my whole thing is, like, how do you go from saying you feel good last week to now that you might miss the rest of the season? And you just said that the Clippers are not going to reevaluate for another three to four weeks. I don't think that the Clip I don't think that this article really brought anything to light. All I think what happened was he repeated what was said from Wojnarowski back on Christmas that there's a possibility he could miss the rest of the season because it's a torn UCL. 
but I don't think that the Clippers have done anything extra since uh, Christmas Day. So these stories that they're reporting out here, you got to be careful who's reporting these stories because it can be a lot of, you know, he say, she say. But as far as the overall, I'm going to kind of get this. This is the last point I'm going to make. The Clippers, this is the time to win is now. You can't afford to miss another year. This team fully constructed can beat any team out West. They can beat Golden State. They can beat Phoenix. They can beat Utah. They can beat the Lakers. They can beat uh, Memphis. Fully constructed. They can beat anybody. You bring a Kawhi Leonard, in my opinion, the best playoff performer in the NBA, with a Paul George, who's a great secondary star, who proved himself last week, got that monkey off his back. You mix that in with the shooting that they have with Marcus Morris, Luke Kennard, Nicholas Platoon. You mix in the depth of size that they have with Vizca Zubak, Isaiah Hardenstein, the playmaking of Bledsoe. Uh, they got uh, Mir Coffey coming up, Terrence Mann. All these pieces that they have and the coaching of Ty Lue, that's a championship formula team. You cannot afford to just sit that out for another year. Like I just mentioned earlier, this is a team that has all the ingredients to win a championship. You got to go for it. If Kawhi says, I'm ready to play, you got to let him play. If he looks ready to play on the court, let him play. Paul George, if he's re if you're able to, you know, find a way to rehab that and keep that strong until the end of the season, get the surgery, then so be it. But it doesn't make sense to just have these have Kawhi Leonard sit out another whole year, whole season playoffs, and just be like, okay, well, how about next season? That's just another season wasted. So tell me what y'all think about what I'm saying. And, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to always be open for any type of, you know, direct talk. If you got any qu qu comments, questions, please hit, them in, hit me in the uh, comment section. You know what I'm saying? Pull up a seat, pull up a chair, pull up. Peace. Out of here like swimwear.